Hello, my name is Rob Reynolds. Welcome to Math 073. Today we're getting our fifth section um, and we're going to be looking at how to solve rational expressions. So we've been looking at how to simplify um, uh, ratios, which are really just fractions, um, compound fractions in particular, but now we're going to look at how to solve equations. So when you have equations here uh, such as this, the goal here is to clear the denominators. So we look again for common denominators just like you were going to add. So we're going to pretend like this 8 doesn't even exist. In order to simplify this we would add by choosing a common denominator which means choose every factor as many times as it appears in each denominator. In this case the common denominator would be 4x. Similarly you're going to be doing the same thing when you solve. You're still going to choose a common denominator of 4x but then you're going to multiply every term by 4x and then a lot of things will start canceling. So down here uh, the common denominator that you'd multiply by would be x plus 3 and x minus 3, um, x plus 3, x minus 3, and then again x plus 3 and x minus 3. And perhaps if you see here this factors to x plus 3 and x minus 3 so that this will cancel. So the whole goal is to multiply through by a common denominator that will eliminate the fraction and then hopefully all you have left would be um, a, a normal algebra one equation. So again, what I'm going to show you how to do is clear the fractions, which most students don't like fractions anyway, so the first step should always be get rid of the fractions and you can do that by multiplying all the terms on both sides by the common denominator or otherwise known as the least common multiple. So our first example um, is similarly what we had before. So the common denominator is 4x. So I'm going to multiply this side by 4x and this side by 4x. And remember, you can do anything you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. So from the left side I multiply by 4x and the right side I multiply by 4x. But then I'm going to distribute that 4x to every term. So it looks like I've multiplied the left side twice by 4x and the right side only once, but I didn't. I just multiplied because this is a, a sum. So I'm kind of distributing that 4x to every term. So then I can start canceling. Uh, so all of this 4x will cancel with this 4x. And over here, this x will cancel, this top x will cancel with this x down here. So what I have left is all of this 4x is gone, is just the 2x minus 7. But this 4 is left, so I have to distribute that to both of these terms in here, the x plus 5. So I'll bring down a 4x plus 20 leaving me with, well, nothing cancels over here, so 32x. So notice I've cleared the denominators. I'm going to combine like terms. Uh, 6x plus 14 is equal to 32x. I'm going to get all the x's on the same side. So if I subtract off 6, I get 26x. Let me check my math here. Negative 7 plus 20, maybe this is a 13. Uh, oops, so sorry. And then if I divide through by 26 to both sides, I'll get uh, 1 half equals x. You always want to check to make sure that the, the answer doesn't cause uh, the denominator to divide by 0. So I think 1 half will work. Um, here's how the author chose to uh, work through the problem. And it looks like the author got the same solution, 1 half. Here's their check. They're actually plugging in. Every time you see an x, the author's plugging in a 1 half. And they actually go through and actually check it. That's nice. Um, if you haven't made any mistakes, it should work. Uh, but just be sure um, that you don't have any computational errors and that you, at the end you're not dividing by 0. Those would be complications. So again, picking a common denominator, I'm going to choose every factor as many times as it appears in each denominator. So x plus 3 is a factor. Uh, no, it's not. 3x plus 1 is a factor. And x is a factor. Now remember, one, this 3x is not a factor because it's, it's not 3x times 7. If I had 3x times 7, then that would be. So factors are things that are being multiplied together. So 3x is not a factor here, but x is a factor because it's all by itself. So I'm going to multiply by x, 3x plus 1. And you may think you need to choose that twice, but remember, you choose every factor is the greatest number of times it appears in each. So it only appears once in each, so you only need it once in the common denominator. And I'm going to write this on every term. So again, it looks like I've multiplied now the right side twice. Uh, one, two, but this side only once, but I didn't. I multiplied both sides by the common denominator and then distributed to every term. Let's see if we can uh, cancel. All of this will go with all of this, leaving me with just a two on this side. 
the x's cancel here, bringing down a 3x plus 1. And over here, um, only the 3x plus 1 will cancel with the 3x plus 1. So I've got an x and a 6x left for a total of uh, 6x squared. So whenever I see an x squared and an x term, usually the goal is to set it equal to 0 and try to factor. So I'm going to want to get a positive x squared term because my factoring rules only work for a leading coefficient being positive. So I'm going to throw this negative x squared over on the other side. Likewise, the negative 3x over here, and I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, setting it equal to 0. So now I'm going to look for factors of 6 and 1. If you don't know how to factor, I would suggest you look at a previous video that I teach factoring. So we're going to look for factors of uh, 6 and 1 that add up to the middle term, which is 3. Um, so I just noticed that the author has a typo in here. This should have been a 2x term, a 2x term. I'll show you how the author solved it here in a moment. So that changes things because this is now a 2x. And so when I subtract off, I'm going to have to subtract off 3x from both sides, leaving me with a negative x um, um, minus 1 because uh, this is now a minus sign, because I'm subtracting off this 1. Uh, it's very hard to see. I apologize. I didn't look at this beforehand, but this is a minus 1 in here. So I'm going to go minus 1, minus 1, and that'll bring down a minus 1 on this side. I hope you can follow that. So now I need factors of 6 and 1 that differ by 1, and here they come. So I'm going to choose uh, 3x plus 1, and 2x minus 1. Apologize for that. Again, I should have found the author's mistake before I started this. But here I get x equals negative 1 third. Here I get x equals 1 half. And remember, uh, you need to check these solutions. And I'm not a big fan of the negative 1 third. Because if you were to try to plug that in uh, to the denominator down here, I'll get um, negative 1 plus 1, which is a 0, and you cannot divide by 0. So this is called an extraneous solution. You just discard that, and the only solution here is going to be 1 half, uh, the only thing that works. But see here, the author has a 2, and then magically, for some reason, they change it to a 2x. So I think this should have been a 2x term. Um, this should have been a 2x. So apologize for that. I should have caught that. But the important thing here is when you get down to negative one-third, uh, try to check it. It's undefined. So you throw that solution out, and the only solution left is the negative one-half. Let's try it again. Um, you could multiply both sides by the common denominator here, uh, but we've seen problems like this before. Sometimes just cross-multiplying is a faster uh, route. So I'll just say yellow equals green. Uh, it's the same thing as multiplying by the common denominator. If, if you want to think about it, see, because look, this, if you multiply by the common denominator, which is x plus 2, x minus 2, the x plus 2's cancel, and you're just doing this 4 times this, which is the same thing as doing this yellow. So it's 4 times the x minus 2 is equal to 5 times the x plus 3. But I wouldn't multiply both sides by the common denominator. It's easier just to set yellow equal to uh, green. Uh, cross multiply. So let's finish this guy up. Uh, this is 4x minus 8 is equal to 5x plus 10. I'll subtract off x from both sides, or 4x from both sides, and I'll subtract off 10 from both sides. We move with negative 18, and negative 18 is not going to cause me to divide by 0, so I will say that should be a solution, and the author agrees, and he says it checks. So let's try again. Before you find a common denominator, it's always best to try to factor, because to choose a common denominator, you have to choose every factor as many times as it appears. So the first thing we want to do is factor so we can find a common denominator. The greatest number of factors that appears in each denominator. So I've got an x plus 3 that appears, and it looks like it only appears the greatest number of times once in each denominator, and I have an x minus 3. So I'm going to multiply that on every term, and it takes a while to write this out, but I found that students who take the time to write it out do better, because it's easier to see uh, the, the cancellations. So I'm going to cancel this x plus 3 with this x plus 3. 
I'm going to cancel uh, this x minus 3 with this x minus 3. And I'll cancel all of this green with all of this. Everything cancels. So let's see what's left here. I've got 8 gets distributed here for a total of 8x minus 24. Now, be really careful. I would really think about this being a negative 6 getting distributed. So I would circle this negative and I would circle the 6. Negative 6x minus 18. Um, and I believe the only thing left over on this side is a 2. So I'll combine like terms. 2x. Negative 20 minus 18 is negative 42. If I'm doing my math correctly here, I'll add 42 for a whopping 44, and I'll get a 22, and I'm looking to see if 22 would cause me to divide by 0, and I don't think it does, so I'm sticking with uh, 22. You can plug the 22 and check it. Uh, here's how the author chose to work it out, but nicely enough, they got a 22 as well, and their final solution said it's going to check, uh, so 22 is a solution. Last example, this says f at, let f at a equal 4. Well, we don't have f of a, we have f at x. So the first thing to do is find f at a. And f at a says, well, if you were going to find f at 2, every time you see an x, you would plug in a 2. So to find f at a, every time you see an x, you just plug in an a. So here's the definition of f at a. And it says, let f at a equal 4. So instead of saying f at a, I'll say 4. And so now I've got a new problem in terms of a. And I've substituted f at a for the value of what f at a equals, which is 4. So the goal now is to multiply through by a common denominator, which it looks like is a. So I have to multiply every term by a. Um, I'll start canceling where I can. It's only here. Everything that's left is 4 times a is 4a equals a squared minus, and this canceled, so it's only a 5. And again, I see an a squared and an a, so I'm going to set it equal to 0 a squared minus 4a minus 5. Uh, whenever you see an a squared and an a term, try to set it equal to 0 and factor. Factors of 5 that differ by 4 are 5 and 1. Signs are different. The larger term is negative, so a minus, a plus. So a equals 5 um, and negative 1. So I'm looking back at the original problem. I don't think negative 1 is going to cause any problems, and neither would the 5. So I would say both of those solutions look pretty good to me. Here's how the author chose to work it out. I don't quite understand sometimes when the author works things out, but maybe you can pause the video and check that out. The important thing is, is it looks like the solutions are 5 and negative 1. Again, I would have to spend a little bit of time to see what the author did. It looks like he multiplied both sides by a here uh, to clear the common denominator. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email me. Uh, hope you find success in this assignment. Have a good day.